<laughs> Welcome back to another midweek episode with Just Vanny It coming to you live from the office. Hello, hello, let's go. Greetings, guys. This week's um, episode or topic is going to be our tips on buying a caravan. We are going to bring you some of our personal insights when it comes to buying a caravan because we know how overwhelming it can be. There is so much to choose from, so many options available. It can get overwhelming, kind of. It can get very overwhelming. So stick with us and we'll talk you through our thought process. Just a disclaimer here, this is our thought process. It's not necessarily right for you, but hopefully we can shed some light or get you starting to ask or some questions. Or even like, you might, because it can get overwhelming and when you go to the shows and stuff, you you, you sometimes just you, know, you, you forget about, you can forget about some of these, well, important to topics. So. We're going to try and break it down for you. We'll, um, some of them you might know, some of them might be new to you, or some might just you know bring back um, that memory of when you're going to go and buy a caravan. All right, so top of the list, we've got budget. And I am the Minister of Finance, so I tend to be in charge of this. Um, really important that when you're looking at purchasing a new van, you have a set budget in mind. Um, and with that budget, you've then got to compare that to your requirements. So I know that when we set off, I gave Derek a very strict budget and um, I also gave him a list of requirements for that budget. So the list was a full on suite. It was on top. So what Sue's basically saying, we had a little list of your top priority and work your way down to your least priority. Yeah. Full on suite, comfortable place to work and obviously somewhere to sleep. That was it. But he had to do that with the budget we had. Everything else yep. came after that. So we started like deleting some of the, 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 the less priority items and we managed to find a van within our budget. Now, our budget back then was a little bit less than what budgets are now because of the, it was pre-COVID. So we managed to find a caravan. So it, I, I don't, I think, doesn't matter your budget, there will be a caravan out there that would fit your budget but your priority list so make sure that you stick to them because otherwise you invest in a caravan and and, and if it doesn't have your top priorities there you're most probably not going to enjoy it and you're going to most probably sell it and lose money and then have to start again and you want to make sure that your budget is within sort of an achievable threshold yep. and that you know it's comfortable for you right. wait i wait. think this is you this is your speciality. Now we're not going to dive too much into the weights because we can sit and make a whole nother video on it and I'm not, to be honest with you, the reason why I have never done one is I'm still learning. I always say there's something new to learn every day about the weights, but if you have your tow vehicle already, know your vehicle's towing capacity and your GVM and GCM because both will play a part in, in the type of caravan that you're going to be buying. Also, another thing is that we found, at least with when we um, were building the Vacationer, and we're using that as an example because that's what we know, that's what we've got experiencing, they asked us what our towing vehicle was, and they said to us, "You, well, we don't think you can have that caravan, let's get you into one of, the, um, let's get you a caravan at this level, and we can w start adding some stuff from a from a more expensive heavier caravan to so they wouldn't they weren't going to sell us a caravan that we wouldn't be able to tow now we've seen this or at least i've seen this on a few social media platforms um in groups in on, on facebook that people are going out they're buying a caravan because the the manufacturer possibly I'm just going to say or that because dealership. it's generally a dealership dealership um didn't ask the towing vehicle and when they built the caravan they actually can't tow it and then their caravan they're actually having to sell the caravan or even sell their tow vehicle and upgrade the tow vehicle so it becomes a big cost uh, and your budget will just be blown out the window and you don't want to find yourself in that situation so the weights are really important yeah, so, so know your weights know what you can tow and and believe me it's not because your car can tow three and a half ton it means you can have a three and a half ton vehicle uh, caravan because of your car might 
be have a, have a canopy on it you might have stuff in it you might have kids in it you might bull bar and side steps and all of this kind of stuff that all adds up so there's quite a tricky one with that and um there's a lot of youtube videos out on on gvm and gcm so know your know your van know, know your your towing car's weight and that'll lead you into what caravan you can buy which brings us into size and layout yeah so size there are so many different sizes of van available. Um, there are a couple of considerations. One is like how many people are going to be living in the caravan. Um, if you're a single traveler or you're a couple, you're probably going to be more comfortable in a smaller van than you know somebody who's got a beautiful family in tow. And also what level of comfort are you looking for? Because whilst the small van is very doable, and we've done it, we've had yep. three different size vans, haven't we? I'll let you talk yep. through the, the size vans we've had. We've had a... We've had a 20 foot um, sort of on-road caravan. It was our very first caravan. We sold that and bought a little Nova 16-6, I think. I think it's like just over 16 foot, which was a single axle. And funny enough, had a full on suite, but an east to west bed. We're gonna get into all of that. And then we've got this caravan, which is an 18-6 caravan. So, yeah, we've had sort of all the sizes yeah. up to 20 foot. Well, a range of sizes and sort of the bigger the van, obviously the more living space. So how many of you are living in it are important and what level of comfort you expect. Um, and then that sort of brings us on to the layout because the size of the van, as well as how many people are living in it will affect your layout. Do you want a full on suite or are you happy with a combined on suite with the toilet and base shower and, and base sort of all in one? All in one. Um, do you need bunk beds for your kids? Um, are you happy with a north to south bed? Are you happy and comfortable with an east to west bed? Those are all layout and size considerations. Um, can you do cafe style seating? Do you need an L shaped seat? We do find, we've had both, we do find the L shape because the table, you can actually oh, shift it all the way back. It gives <laughs> us more room in the front there. But then again, you know, we must probably get one or two kids up on here but then you're, you're really narrow for space so maybe the other way the cafe style seating might be a bit better for a family that's entirely up to you so or a club lounge if you've got yeah. multiple people that you need to seat a club lounge is the biggest seating area that will seat more but it takes more space so you'd need a bigger van it's quite crazy at the way caravan designs have come along the, these years they've come a long way because they're getting quite clever with the way they design caravans. So, you know, there's some vans out there that are 20 foot that have got bunks and uh, normally, I think, an east to west bed. So if you're comfortable with an east to west bed and you can bunks, you can still get those smaller vans. So they're getting quite clever with their layouts. So have some sort of idea of what you want and then have a backup idea um, of of where like like we said a priority and then you can work your way down so if you if you we go back to the weights if your car can't tow the very big vans because of weight there are options for you to have the smaller van with the bunks or if you don't have kids you don't want to have the bunks um, you can still try and fit the north to southwest but that might be a compromise if you're having to go for the smaller van and look some of the pros around sort of a smaller van is that they're very maneuverable um, I talk like I know what's going on. I don't tow the vans. I just know that when we were traveling in our little Nova, um, we managed to get in some really tight, awesome spots that we would have had no chance of getting into if we were in a bigger van, either our first one or this one. Um, say hello. Come say hello, mate. Bobby. Oh, so that's, all right. that's the pro of the smaller van and the pro of the bigger van, what we found with the larger vans, it's just more living space for us. Um, so that's really been helpful. The next point is, and maybe this is not the order of your priorities, but our next point is where are you going to be taking this caravan? Where, you know, if you're full time traveling um, or weekend travelers or even school holidays or a, 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 what, maybe a month or two months, a long service leave. Where are you going to be wanting to take the caravan? Are you going to stick to the sort of bitumen, go to caravan parks and not really venture off um, onto the unsealed roads where you can get a bit corrugated and rocky? Um, that will lead you down to your suspension. Yeah. So if you're going to stick to the bitumen, I suggest don't go and pay the extra money for a suspension that you must probably not don't need because that's going to 
Increase the weight of your van. Increase the weight of your yeah. van and your budget. Yeah. If you're going to want to go a little bit more on the off-road but not too crazy, I just, I'd suggest just then putting the um, off-road suspension on. And then if you really want to go sort of like your Cape Yorks, your Arnhem Lands, the Gib, um, the centre and the do a lot more. The crazy corrugation. Yeah, the crazy corrugation. Then I'd, I'd stick to definitely an off, off, um, a full off-road oh, suspension. Yeah. Just yeah. remember too, full off-road suspension to an on-road suspension, there is definitely a weight um, difference there. So then your van is going to start getting heavier yeah. again. So the other thing I think um, with that on-road, off-road suspension. Mate, we're is busy recording, mate. <laughs> mate. Doesn't that affect whether you have a Single yeah. axle or so a dual axle. We've had a tan. We had our first van was a tandem axle, which I, I know it is a dual axle. Axle. Little Nova was a single axle, and then this one is a um, tandem axle well, or dual we axle. We had an yeah. option with this one to either have it single, single or double. Or I, I, I wanted a double, and yeah. I will, we're going to get into that in a minute. So for the single, there's some pros and cons, and with a the tandem, there's some pros and cons. You got to weigh them up again. The single, I do believe will go up to about an 18 6 caravan because then it starts to get a little bit bigger and longer and heavier so if you're looking around that 18 6 generally will be a single axle now the pros of a single axle axle is it's more maneuverable it's lighter because you've only got half the suspension and it's also cheaper to maintain because you've only got two well, including the spare three tires and two wheel bearings to um, maintain. Where your tandem or dual axle caravans, they are gonna be heavier because well, you've got double the suspension. And they're more expensive because you've got four to five so, tires and four to five. Yeah, so your maintenance is gonna be a little bit more expensive yeah. like Sue just said, because you've got now five tires, including the spare, you got four wheel bearings, um, your off-road suspensions, I think come with, um, like this one's got eight shocks underneath. So I've got two on each point. So you can see where that's going. But I do find, and believe me, this is only my opinion. A lot of people will um, maybe have a different opinion on it, and that's fine. If your if your caravan's packed the the right way, I just found towing a dual axle was a little bit less all over the road sort of thing. I just found it just sticks behind the car a little bit better. Please. Nothing wrong with towing the Nova, I just find that this one just edged it a little bit in, in places. And I um, always felt a bit safer because I thought if we do have a blowout with the dual or tandem, yes, there, are still, there are still three tyres on the road yeah. versus if you have a blowout I, in a single axle like one half's gone. Well, the biggest thing when we bought the Nova, we, people reached out and said just be careful of having like a blowout at 90 k's an hour because you've got nothing else to rest on. Um, Fortunately, we didn't have a blowout, but we have a blowout on a tandem axle. I'm not saying it's not going to happen or it can happen. Fortunately, it hasn't happened to us where one tire will um, burst from it. Like you have a burst tire, it'll rest on the other one and you can try and bring that to a stop. And hopefully there will be minimal um, damage to the caravan. Oh, so, Bob's decided to have an episode while we're recording oh no, the video. He's so. going crazy. Um, so that's sort of the the differences between the the tandem and the single so again reflects to the budget and the size of the caravan um, that you want the next up we're going to talk about or do you want to talk about this one because you actually um sue so actually did a little research yeah i'm a bit one. of a research nerd so frames and floors um so traditionally caravans have obviously been built with wooden frames and a lot of caravans still are built with wooden frames um so absolutely nothing wrong with a wooden frame. You, might you, you may find that obviously wood's heavier than aluminium, which some of the newer manufacturers and designs are starting to um, build from aluminium rather than the wood. Um, and the other thing with the wood, and again, not always the case, but you may be susceptible to um, rot. So if you're living in a high humidity climate or if there's a leak for whatever reason, um, you know, you may experience that rot, but again, if everything's sealed up correctly and your van's well maintained, nothing wrong with with wood. But versus the aluminium, it's obviously lighter. It is. Um, so with the aluminium, it's lighter, and I read that it actually transmits shock better. So for us, we're on a lot of corrugated and unsealed roads, and because it has, you know, a bit bit of flex. 
um, the actual shock on the van is transmitted better, which means the, l the lifespan of the van can be extended. Okay. Um, when it comes to the floors, obviously the traditional caravans have the wheel arches um, with the floors. Nowadays you've got an option of a flat floor. So we're yeah, Some manufacturers are offering flat floor options. Yeah. So there's a pro and a con to that too. Not too many like pros and cons, but the, the pro for a flat floor is that you don't have wheel arches. Also gives your caravan a little bit more um, ground clearance, but with having the uh, flat floor inside, you've got more packing room. You've got more packing room, so you don't have those wheel arches that you're going to pack around. But then again, on the wheel arches, it the caravan sits lower. So generally, on a flat floor, you would have a double step in because the caravan sits quite high. And then with the with the wheel arches, the caravan will sit a bit lower, and you can must probably get away with a single step. And then. With having the higher van behind your car, you've got more drag, so possibly a little bit more of fuel economy. I don't, I, I do see a little bit, but not nothing that it's going to drastically change the flat floor to the um, the wheel arches. And you've also got the choice of a honeycomb floor now, so that's yep. something that they bought in, and that is purely around sort of water resistance and its ability to deal with water spills or water leaks where you, you won't get the swell that you get in sort of the traditional wooden floors um, which if you you know tend to flood caravans which touch wood haven't done in a long time but it's um, happened to a few people that we yeah. know that you know you forget to put the, the water pump off when you're traveling and somebody leaves something in the sink and it pops up from the corrugations pops up hits the handle up and then just starts filling the van before you actually realize that your van's flooding, it's a lot of water. Yeah. So I think what caravan manufacturers are trying to do is to try and eliminate as much timber as you can by going with the, 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 the technologies there. So, and also the honeycomb floor is lighter and it's like a one piece. I've found the timbers is generally the sheet, join, sheet, join, sheet, join. If it doesn't get joined correctly, possibly you could get water in there and start swelling. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, Let's just think outside the box. If you needed to change a floor in a caravan for some reason, I reckon there's a bit of involvement there because where the joins would be in the timber would be like maybe under a bed or under your start of your joinery. Mm -hmm. And just common sense sounds like quite a big job. So yeah. I think, um, you know, a honeycomb floor is quite important. And same with the aluminium framing. Now, like we said, if a caravan gets done properly, we believe you shouldn't have that. But if you do, it's quite a big job to, to get in behind this walling to try and sort out that wood. And power, I'm definitely gonna leave this one to you. Yeah, we're not gonna double two because this one tends to come up quite a lot in our midweek episodes in regards to separate um, topics. Yeah. topics. But power. So again, where do you sort of want to venture to? If you're gonna be going to caravan parks and maybe a day here, free camp and then go to another caravan park to charge up and what you're running that'll all depend on the power I, I strongly suggest a good starting point nowadays is uh, like a 200 amp lithium battery or there or there about some do a 180 or 220 or whatever it is um, I think that's a good starting point number one also is lithium is lighter than AGM so we're trying to lighten that van even more and also lithium you know you can discharge a lithium a lot more than an AGM AGM apparently has only got a 50% discharge floor rate where lithium has got 80% possibly even more than that um, they charge better they and, and there's a lot of pros about it um, having lithium and then same with the solar panels if you're going to be doing just a one-nighter and going back into a caravan park you don't need as much solar as like we have on this caravan mm. and what people say you should put on there now if you're going to be starting to venture a bit longer off grid then you can start by going maybe a 400 amps and then and then 600 amps and then they even go up to people are putting 900 amps of lithium in but that is entirely up to where and what you're going to do. So all our points here sort of re relate back to sort of like where you want to go, your budget, because power systems can get cool. quite quite pricey. Yeah. Um, you know, and your personal requirements. It, it, exactly. It all comes to you. We can what are you going to be running? Experience. Yeah. You know, do you want to run the aircon off grid? We have the ability to run the aircon off grid, and I'll, I'll tell you what, the top, oh, I haven't even done it yet. Unless you want to run it for an hour, because they do eat a lot of power. 
and to be able to replenish that power could take two days to get that power back and um, so yeah and also like if you want to run an air fryer because a lot of people are cooking with air fryers um, lithium is definitely the way to go because it's got a also I forgot to mention lithium has a bigger discharge um, rate on it so if you're going to try to run an air fryer off an AGM battery I do believe you can but like you'll just destroy the battery because they discharge because an air fryer if you look on your little monitors they can pull about 160 amps until it gets to temperature then it shuts off then it turns on because that's how uh, an air fryer sort of works and um, your discharge is is quite a big thing so if you're wanting to run sort of those things got it you can't go past lithium and unfortunately it does put a little bit of cost on top of the caravan and then power again water won't go into too much detail here the important thing to remember is water weighs so it depends whether you're in a caravan park with a water source or whether you're off grid if you're off grid you need to carry more water and secondly which is quite important is a grey water tank so a lot of the places you go to now in terms of the national parks they require you to be self-contained that means that you can catch your own grey water so that um, shower sink all of that kind of type of water yeah so if you've got a tank on the van it's obviously beneficial you can get mobile tanks um, a lot of people just put a bucket under the problem is disposing of that water yeah. so I highly recommend a grey water tank if you're going to be camping in national parks now a big big one that's growing in the industry is obviously the composting toilet we don't have a composting toilet we never had one so we can't really talk about it. a lot of our friends have it um, we still got the chemical um, like your cassette toilet that's what we what we hearing on the thing there's loads there's some YouTube videos out on chemical toilets uh, not chemical <laughs> composting toilets is that you can go for a longer period of time if you're not there if you make up this this compound in your toilet correctly um, two people um, friends that we're traveling with uh, they went like three four maybe even five weeks before you had to change it out and then you can actually get rid of that a lot easier because it's compost and then you wash it out and you you make up this compost mix. mix and then you and off you go where the chemical toilet you know two three four days depending on how many people you've got to look for a dump point because that's the correct way to get rid of your dump point is to find a dump point and to do a dispose of it so it's cost it's also preference yeah and just a recommendation if you do decide to go with a cassette toilet a second cassette comes in very never handy. goes astray the old second cassette because you know yeah you could want to be off grid for a bit longer then you can store the one and then use the other and then when you go to the dump point you can get rid of them pretty easy that one and appliances appliances um, hot topic appliances so I think the ma major thing for appliances are you know are you gonna go gas or are you gonna go electric um, because you get the choice nowadays if you go electric that obviously affects your power system which is a higher cost um, also for hot me, tip sorry yeah. see hot tip if you're gonna go electric van which a lot of people seem to be going down that way and I don't see a problem with it at all minimum apparently would be 600 amps of lithium big solar on the roof because what people don't understand I'm not gonna go on about it sorry but just a hot tip is that that 600 amps is usable power you need to put that 600 amps back into the batteries for tomorrow or the next day if you're going to be using a full electric van so when we say electric van is like you have your induction cooktops um, your air fryers microwave no oven or stove so you're doing everything via electric um, so it does eat a lot of power so I would suggest like I don't look know. into it. I, you look into it, but I, I do believe like 600 would be minimum. 400 is doable. You're just going to need to, mo yeah, you can't cook several times during the day because it's going to use and it. And run you things together. Run things together too. Yeah. Big inverter. You can't be running induction cooktop. Yeah. The microwave and an air fryer. It's going to, you know, you need big power system yeah. for that. So. Our first van, we couldn't run the microwave and the air fryer together or the was it the microwave and the aircon it was one of the two but the other thing is um vans are pretty standard they tend to come with you know your microwave you'll have a grill you'll either have sort of the gas cooktop or the induction cooktop an oven is an option 
uh, first van had no oven, second van had an oven, I spoiled, now I demand an oven. It does take away storage, but I just love it. But what's becoming very popular is the air fryers. Um, so, you know, if you're cooking with an air fryer, you don't necessarily need the gas oven. So again, there are options out there. It's something to consider when you're thinking about, you know, purchasing a van. Are you going to go gas, electric, combination of, how do you enjoy to cook? Fridges, um, compressor fridges are, are coming more popular because you're not really have to run them on gas. Less to go wrong with them, I, I do believe, because you don't have the gas side of it. Um, I know our, our first fridge was a three-way and the igniter used to play up a little bit and I used to have to go around the back dangerously, open it up, <laughs> get Sue to push it with a light, a long, those long lighters for the fire and then get it to go. They're a bit tricky. They use a lot, quite a lot of gas because this is our first van that we've had a compressor fridge and we run the composite gas bottles on the front which are seven and a half kgs. On our eight and a half kg before we got them, we would get four to five weeks on a gas bottle and on a compost we get four about four weeks now on it because you're one kg less and that will run obviously the gas stove the gas hot water unit and the ziggy outside not the fridge so there's a big when we used to run the fridge was 10 days yeah so we've gone for basically 10 days a direct sort of comparison would be like four to five weeks of that yeah. gas um which brings us on to one of the, the sort of final processes in your van purchase and that's colour selection, um, also a big one. Um, so this is really one of the last parts of the process because you'll decide on your van, your manufacturer or your van um, brand type and then just before they actually build the van you'll be called in for colour well, selection. We think that's generally because um, we're only talking from experience yeah. because Vacation was our very first caravan we built brand new. All of our other caravans were second hand yeah. and your, your colour selection will come up generally just sort of a few weeks before your van would hit the, hit the production line. So we were actually quite stunned when we went and this is how they can build caravans so quickly from start to finish is our cabinetry was pre-made. Yeah. Everything was they knew exactly the floor, the colour, the everything, and then it just went through the production line and it's done. The camera is done. So in, don't stress out too much about the colours on the day you want to uh, purchase the caravan because if you're building one, you would be then called in a few weeks before production yep. to be able to choose colours. And I do believe once you've done it, it's very hard to change, especially like cabinetry because, well, it's pre made. <laughs> that's all right um, but with colors that's also a very um, sort of personal preference um, most people understand what sort of color combinations they like um, have a bit of inspiration we spent a lot of time on the internet didn't we actually yeah. looking at caravan interiors new caravan interiors to see what kind of options were out there um, and the other thing is go to the caravan show because you'll see a lot of vans with different types of um, color combinations ask people who own caravans to share pictures with you so there are lots of um groups on social media with caravan owners you can even become for instance with us we're part of the vacation owners group so there are actually people on the group who own vacations ask them to show pictures of their color co combinations and people love sharing and it gives you a really good idea of what it looks like when it comes out and the thing is that most manufacturers will have a selection um or a fixed selection of colors of cabinetry, colors for your coverings, for your um, soft furnishing, fixed floorings that you can select from, fixed countertops that you can select from. So, you know, whilst you may have one idea in mind, when you actually look at their color selections, they might not be offering exactly what you're after, but most of them will be able to offer you an alternative. Um, and that's about it. That's yeah. Final hints and tips. Sue's got a hint, and not like last, uh, last episode, I'm going to let her have it. Yeah, you're not allowed, into, he's not allowed to cut this one short. Got into trouble. <laughs> so, this does very much depend whether or not you are an experienced sort of person who, who has caravan before, whether it's with family or yourself, versus somebody who's never caravan before. So, that's a big consideration. And my hint would be, if you're looking at a certain size, certain brand, certain... Um, louder van look to see if you can hire one 
um, and go away for like two days well, in it. Not even, it's not about trying like the exact van because that's going to be very difficult. If you've never caravan before, and believe me, we've met quite a few people and a lot of people do sort of ask us on the social media uh, platforms, is that you can go away in a caravan and get the feel for what it's like to, I mean, we basically sleep, eat, work, work all in one room and in the one suite there. So be quite different what you expect. And another one I would like to say too, is if you get the opportunity to hire a caravan, try and, try and pick two different caravan sites. So you get the feel for what it's like to get it there, set up, then tomorrow or the next day, pack it all away, move. move, maybe it's 50 k's up the road, unpack again, and then pack up the next day to return the caravan. Gives you some sort of indication of what it's like, because believe me, sometimes on the road, especially for us, we're only camping for one night and then we're moving, then we're camping, then we're moving, then sometimes we'll stay for a week, that's fine. We're just trying to help you if this is the sort of thing that you would like to try and do, instead of going to spend all this money on a caravan and you actually most probably, it's not for you, who knows? And the other tip is go to the caravan show. So uh, Derek mentioned that the show's on in Brisbane at the moment. There's a lot to look at and you can get a lot of research ticked off in a small space mm. and a limited time. Um, ask other caravan owners. If you know anyone who owns a caravan or if you're on a social group, ask questions. No question is a silly question. The more questions you ask, the more informed you are the more likely you are to have a successful successful purchase that you're very happy with. Um, and ask the dealership. You know, the dealership is there to assist you. Share information with them so they can ensure that they're you know, providing you with the best solution to meet all of your requirements. And okay. that's it. Well, we hope those some points there for you guys for when you're looking at buying a new caravan and we've kind of narrowed it down for you. And um, it's an exciting time when you go and buy a caravan. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a... A nervous thing to do um, it should be a nice easy process and, and fun because you're buying a caravan for what you're going to be using it for and, and we absolutely love this lifestyle even if we were getting away on weekends which we used to do getting before this not maybe with a caravan but it's it should be an exciting time so yeah guys that's it for another midweek episode with um, myself Sue and Mr. Rough Bob on the floor He's been knocking around a bit. I'm gonna go and see if he's damaged anything. But from myself and Sue. Oh, also, if any of these top these topics helped you, drop a comment in down below because we'd love to know if anything that we've mentioned in this video helped you. Um, it's good to get that feedback for us as well, making these videos um, that people are taking away some sort of um, benefit benefit from our videos. So from myself and Sue. That's it, guys. Enjoy um, the rest of the week. And uh, we've got another episode coming out in a few days. So, see ya.